I poured everything, brother. Gospel of St. John, chapter 21. Gospel of St. John, chapter 21 tonight. Preach to you a little while, Lord being our helper. Appreciate a lot of our friends coming in from different places, coming in and being with us to meet tonight. We appreciate seeing you and you coming and being with us tonight. The service. Most of all tonight, if you're here and don't know the Savior, if you're lost without God, it would be a good night for you to get saved by the grace of God. The Lord loves you and cares about you. No matter how deep in sin you've gone, no matter what you've done, the Lord loves you and cares about you. That's the best news in the world, brother. The Lord loves you and cares about you. And died for your sins. Man, you can go away from here not justified. Justified. Just as if you'd never sinned. Amen. The Bible said in chapter 21, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. <coughs> and on this wise showed he himself. They were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also shall go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. When the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. He said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loveth saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes. And soon, then, as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet not the net broke. Brother Watson Williams, you will lead us while we pray tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Watson. I want to preach to you tonight. The Bible said in verse 3, Simon Peter said, I go a fishing. In verse 5, Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And I want to preach to you tonight, old children, have ye any meat tonight? If you got any meat, the Lord Jesus walked up on the sandy shores and looked out across some men that he had walked by the seashore and called them and saved them and gathered them together. And he looked out on them now and he said, Children, have you got any meat? And they said, No. And I wonder tonight if the Lord spoke to my heart and your heart and stood in the doorway of the church tonight and said, Children, have you got any meat? What would be our answer tonight? And I looked at this today as I studied and prayed and sought God's will on a message. And I said, well, if you're going to fish, you've got to have a place to fish. 
And this boy is what a praise. I mean, the fifth time in this, they had caught fish time and time again. They always caught fish time. They went dirty in and go out. They're fish. They're plenty of fish, beloved. So be caught, but they didn't have no fish. Now, I thought this evening and yesterday evening, and I got to town early and went around Chattanooga and Rossville. But well, there's plenty of fish here in these waters. How many nice fish to be caught? They, we can't say there's not no fish. There's multitudes in the city. There's people on every corner. There's plenty of fish to be caught. But I ask you tonight, have we got any fish tonight? Well, the place where there's that was all right. There's plenty of fish. I mean, just flopping everywhere. There's plenty of fish to be had. And I examined the boat. I said, I wonder about the boat they're in. Reckon the boat's all right. The boat was fine. They had floating. They wasn't taking in no water. And I examined your boat here. Boy, it's a pretty boat to fish out of, ain't it? I mean, the bill is beautiful. What a boat you've got here by the way. And there's a place to fish out of. There's a pretty boat here. My God, what a pretty boat it is. I mean, it's nice enough to bring anybody in to. It's pretty nice enough. There's nothing wrong with a boat tonight. Nothing wrong with a place. Plenty of fish in this place. Pretty boats you got here. And I said, well, if it's not the place, not the boat, Bible said here they had a net they're fishing with. I said, I wonder if there's something wrong with a net. Maybe it's a net something's wrong with. And I looked at the net. Wasn't nothing wrong with a net. And I got to examine our net. I looked it over. I've been looking at it. I read through the pages. I'm well up over the promises. There ain't nothing wrong with our net, but I mean, we got a good man tonight. It's old King James 1611. It called my grandma. It called my mama. It called me, brother. There ain't nothing wrong with a net. Got a good net. Net's fine. It ain't a revision we need, brother. It's a revival in our heart. That's what we need. I got saved, brother Paul. I didn't know nothing about any other Bible. I got saved. Went home, got my little mama dime store, read that Bible, and picked that thing up and went to the house of God. And I know oh, what Bible I might say. Right I in the red, what Jesus said. And I'd hold that thing to my heart. And I'd get up my wheel in the morning. I'd read that Bible. And God would speak to my heart. I'd say in the night, there ain't nothing wrong with a man. There ain't nothing wrong with a boat. And there's nothing wrong with a place to die. I reckon what the trouble is, children. I reckon why we ain't got no meat to die. Reckon why there's no meat. And I looked and looked. You say, Brother Daniel, I got trouble understanding this Bible. Get to know the author of it. And I'll eliminate a lot of your trouble on understanding the Word of God. Get to know the author of it. And I'll tell you the best way to know the author. Get you somewhere out in the woods where you pray. You live in the city, bless God. Get somewhere in the bathroom, lock the door. Get on your face and say, God, introduce yourself to me in this Bible and show me and get to know the author of this Bible. That'll help it a lot, brother. You know the author of it. I said, well, there must be something wrong with the crew on this boat. Must be in the crew. I got to examine in the crew here. In verse 2, Simon Peter's on this boat, just as backslid as a goose. Out there naked, backslid. He said, Lord, I'll die for you. The Bible said he had warmed himself by the devil's fire. And I'll tell you something. I learned a lesson today reading this, studying this. God spoke to old Simon Peter, backslid on that, out there with the devil's fire. 
We were all on the roof. I don't know if it was down the neck of head or uh, Rhode Island Red, but I'll tell you that rooster was pliable in God's hand. That rooster knowed right where to get and right when to crow. And he did it just like God wanted him to do it. We can learn from that preacher. And I'll tell you something else, I've seen that rooster. When Peter heard him crow, Peter didn't look and see the rooster. But he looked and he saw Jesus standing in the shadows. I love when I preached and I crowed that you'd see the Lord Jesus Christ. And not me. It's not my gospel. It's not my plan. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who that he is. Simon Peter backslid on that boat. Maybe the night you backslid. You can't catch no fish backslid. Can't catch no fish. Thomas was on that boat. Old Thomas said, except I put my hand in his side and see his nail prints, I won't believe. Oh, Doubting Thomas. You ever met them before? You ever, I don't, don't quiet enough on me now. I ain't going to get mean tonight. I got 30 weeks revival this year. I didn't get 30 weeks by being mean. I ain't getting mean with you. Thomas was doubting. You ever seen him doubt? Man of God, get up and say, God led me to do something. Somebody get up and say, I don't believe we can do it, brother. I don't believe we can handle that. Some old teachers went and cried over the Bible. Get up and teach some out of the Word of God. They'll say, I just don't believe that. I just can't have that. Doubting Thomas, brother. I don't know if you got any up here in Georgia or not. We got plenty of them in Alabama, though. Down Thomas. You know Nathaniel, he's on that boat. You know Nathaniel, he's the one, he's a skeptic. You ever met any skeptics? He's the one said, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? They just said, bless God, come and see for yourself. Nathaniel is alive. Indeed, he's no guy I found it in. Oh, Nathaniel, he said, no good thing come out of Nazareth. You ever met any of them skeptics tonight? I mean, if you told them that that right there was white, they'd say, oh, no, that's all white. It's not really white. That's all white. If you told them that was brown right there, they'd say it's tan. It's not really brown. You have any skeptics like that? I mean, there's lots of them, brother. Lots of them. Them sons of Zebedee, James and John, they're in that crew, too, on that boat. There's the one the mother come out and said, Grant my two sons to set one on the right hand and one on the left hand when thine enter into thy kingdom. Them glorious seekers, you have many of them? Glorious seekers! They'll say, quick, I'll visit with you, I'll work with you, but you better call my name out there. You better call them folks out there. You better call my word. Yeah. Glorious seekers, you have many of them? Yeah. Glorious seekers. They'll say, Come in the house of God, stack a book, she hardly pulled him on the arm. You call on the thing, I said, I didn't come the same. I didn't come the same. Glorious people want you to beg them to do something for God. Amen. Got lots of them down in Alabama, our way. Glorious people. Be honest with you tonight. A lot of folks is like that. I last year and I quit my job and went full time to evangelism. I had about three or four weeks camp along me and meetings, and I know what I was going to do. And I told honey, I said, well, then, I said, God's called me to preach, and I've done math all over the country. I'm a full-time evangelist. I said, I'm going to get out and help me a place to preach. And you know where I found me a place at? I went down there to the old prison houses in Alabama, state penitentiaries, and I knocked on the doors and said, boy, I said, I'm evangelist and bugged in the chapel, and I'd like to come in here and tell you men about Jesus if you let me come in. And that old chaplain said, boy, I've been looking for a man like you for a long time, son. Said, you ain't going to argue doctrine. I said, all oh, that doctrine I'll speak is Jesus and him crucified. In September, now Wayside Prison Ministry, we're in five state penitentiaries in Alabama. And we've seen a hundred men get right with God since September. 
It ain't a thing in the world I've done because the Lord had his right away in our lives. Amen. There ain't no glory in preaching and penitentiary, brother. There ain't no be the doors down to do that. There ain't no preacher fellowship for that. A raising hell had another meaning, brother. I'll tell you what they are, though. There's a bunch of old broken men in there, lost without God. They've been waiting on me to come by, and I've been waiting on them. <laughs> and God do a work in their heart, no lie. I mean, praise God, God saved our soul, and gave us a fishing pole. Have you got any meat tonight? Have you got any meat? The Bible said this. There's two other men on that boat. Wonder who they were. Like one of them was you or me tonight. Like one of them was me and you. You backslid tonight. You doubting. You skeptic. Don't believe nothing nobody tells you. You glory seeking. The Bible said we make a fishers of men. God knows my heart tonight. I wanted to beat and try to win somebody to God. I mean, hey, it don't matter if you like me or if I like you. I got a job to do. I got a message to preach. It don't matter about a popularity contest. My soul, I die and go to hell. Why are we debating over this and that? I ain't got time for it no more. Give me this. I'm going to close tonight. <laughs> I like what the Bible said. I mean, they ain't caught nothing all night. Not a thing. The Bible said in verse 6, let me show you what the difference is when the Lord commands the drag, brother. When the Lord says lower the net. Verse 6, he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find I can see old Peter said, Boys, we've drunk all night. I said, Well, we might as well put it out there. I can see old Thomas said, There ain't no fish out here. We've been here all night. There ain't no fish. Old John, James said, Let us hold the net here if you're going to drag. We won't be holding the net in case you do catch anything. We're all that glory. I can hear. That disciple who the Lord loved. He's up beside Peter and said, Boys, that's the Lord over here on that shore. That's the Lord over yonder. He dropped that man off the side of that boat. And the Bible said another shield had to come up and let them drag that man in. When the Lord said, Drop the man. God will bring in the ship. God will bring in the fish. They backslid. They doubting. And I like what he called them. He said, children. Children. Why I've been lying to you. I backslid a hundred times. I've been all willing to God a hundred times. You have too. Won't you just own up to it? Get caught up in the ministry and forget to pray like you ought to. Don't study like you ought to. Come a-crawling back like a dog to face the Lord and say, Lord, it's me again. But oh, it's weed when it says children. I children, I'd rather tell you that this is not. But if any man says, we got an African with a father and Jesus Christ the righteous. We're going to pick the ways of our sins, and not our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. Children, he says. Now, like this, 153 fishes come afloat in him, brother, when the Lord commanded it. I got ahead of him before, of you. I got ahead of him, but watch him before. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if we can just wait on the command of the Lord, 
The Bible's already commanded us to go in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that our house might be filled. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Good friend of mine, here tonight, Sister Miller and her husband Carl are going to Australia soon, almost Scotland, almost ready to leave. Leaving his family, had traveled mile after mile for months and months. Raised his money and him boys and wife and Thank God for the men that are going without the glory. And a go without them, but God does go. I mean, we turn around wondering, we don't abuse us, we don't impress us, but God is time to go. I mean, go. You know, you can wait no longer. God said, go, it's time to go. Have you got any meat for that? Say, Brother Danny, I ain't no preacher. What's that got to do with it? Brother Danny, I ain't no evangelist. What's that got to do with it? I ain't no teacher. What's that got to do with it? God has called us all to go. I like that brother back there, Brother Paul, or something. Going to cities, knocking doors after doors after doors, letting somebody else reap the harvest. That's what I like. I like him kind of mean. That ain't glory sticking. You run around me, you must glory neither, brother. I'm black sheep, and you run around with me. But I'll tell you one thing. If you stay with me long enough, if somebody will listen, we'll tell them about the Savior. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on! It's all better if we make the soul of the Lord! If we make mercy for our natural, what matters is telling somebody about a dying Savior! And I resurrected, Lord. That's what matters. Amen. 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 person. Does it really matter if I have any meat tonight? Did you know that the classmates at your school may be the only life that they'll see is you? Did you know the only Bible they ever read may be your life? 
Young people, if you know the only Christian that can reach your classmates may be you. They may be watching your life, looking at you, saying, I'd like to be like Bob, Jerry, Tim, Cindy. I'd like to be like those people. They seem to have the joy of God in their heart and their life. Lady, dad, mother, you know the only Christian people may see is your life, the woman that checks your groceries out, your cleaning bill, your gas attendance. You're the only witness that Jesus has is our hands and our feet and our lips and our eyes. How long has it been since you spent some time on your face and said, God, God, help me to have some meat. God, help me to have some meat. I don't care if you agree with Dr. So-and-so or Sister So-and-so. What I'm asking you to not. How long has it been since you won somebody to God? How long has it been since you won God? And oh my God, they're going to hell. Somebody go reach out and get them to go. How long has it been since you couldn't sleep at night? Since you couldn't eat in the daytime? Worried about your son or your daughter or your mother or your dad or your neighbor? Dying and perishing and going to hell. Boy, don't you remember when somebody got concerned about you? Don't you remember what God got me and you had? Somebody cared enough to tell us about it. What about you tonight? Have you got any more children? You can't help. Maybe you say, preacher, I know I ain't want to be with God. I've been doubting. I'm backslid. I just don't believe what the Word of God says about commanding me to go. I really wanted glory for when I did go. Preacher, something's wrong. I've not got no me. Brother Danny, I need to get close to God. I wonder if you'd raise that hand, put it back down tonight. God bless that. All the one just raise that hand tonight, would you? Just raise that hand, put it back down. How long has it been? If you want somebody to God, we're in revival here. If you really invited your neighbors and somebody to come and get right with God. What about that old drunk nobody else don't want? What about that harlot that nobody else don't want? Lord Jesus wants them. Lord Jesus wants them. If you raise that hand and say, Preach, I know I ain't got no meat tonight. Something's missing my life. You just raise that hand, take it back down tonight, would you? Would it be one? Be one tonight. You say, put I'm lost without God. Never been saved. I, I don't want to go from here lost tonight. I wonder if you'd raise that hand. Signify I'd like to get saved, would you? Would you? We stand together tonight and sing. Whatever's missing your life, come on, would you? Make peace with God. <laughs>